Um, today I'm reacting to this amazing story that I came across. I just did a reaction, a duet with this gentleman. So this gentleman right here, this brother, amazing, amazing brother, this brother over here, his name is Chessie Macbeth. Uh, he is, um, he's half African-American, half Egyptian. His story is incredible, incredible. Um, his tag name on TikTok is angry biracial, angry biracial. And it's, it's, it's on the title here. His story is very similar to a lot of Somali stories. The only difference is he's a bastard son, as he says, said himself. Um, that's his father right there. It is the saddest story I have ever heard in my life because his mother, who is an Arab, who was abducted by this African-American man when she came to America to attend college at the age of 18 years of age. Um, this man who was a pim abducted her, enslaved her, um, abused her, impregnated her, and eventually when she was no longer of use to him and she had a child by him already, sent her back to Egypt. By then she was already broken, she was destroyed. And um, his story is gaining a lot of ground now. He wrote a book that's called the one that love forgot. The one that love forgot. So, um, there are many videos. You can watch the videos on his, uh, his page, at Angry Biracial. He's a beautiful brother, beautiful brother, inside out, amazing. Uh, very eloquent, brilliant mind. This particular video reminds me of the Somali saga and how, actually not only the Somali saga, but the black man saga, how black men leave trails of sorrow and broken hearts all over the world, leaving their children behind. And so check this out. This is, this is pretty amazing. I just, oh, fascinating, my goodness. Hey, what's cracking TikTok? It's your angry biracial. This was going to be a little bit more candid, a little, a little bit more personal. See this man? That was my father. It was the only time I had a live call with him. And he was already brain dead. The only thing keeping him alive was the... Because I am a bastard son of a bastard son of a bastard son. A generational curse that seems to plague black men. A curse of them not taking care of their seeds. A curse of passing bastardness of, of passing lying and manipulating and womanizing on and on and on and on of making broken home after broken home i found this man in 2011 and the only reason why i don't carry his name his last name is tuggle i don't carry his name because he told my mother his pimp name his pimp name was macbeth right that was his pimp name and he did that to, to avoid child support, to avoid accountability of his fucking seed. So yeah, I'm angry. I've been angry. Because all I ever wanted in my entire life was to meet the black side of me. And sometimes I think I'd be better off if I didn't have a black father. If I didn't have, if I wasn't cursed for being the seed of, of, of black males who, who are so used to not taking care of their seeds, used to abandoning their seeds. And their seeds, used to abandoning their seeds. My sons, but a lot of my fathers ask me, why are you so angry? This is why I'm angry. Because I'm the son of a black man who was also the son of a black man who didn't give a fuck about the homes he broke. He didn't care about, about, about the women they broke. He broke my mother. It seems wherever black men go, they are breaking the, the women.
do they go to? They're leaving bastard seeds. And that's why these passport bros, when they talk about going overseas, it's not going to be long until those countries catch on to leave a bunch of half black bastard kids in their countries. This is very interesting. The there. passport man. It's not going to be long until, you know, another passport bro is being executed. This is like they do doing in China. You know, you got to be more responsible <laughs> or else if 30 years later, you have another bastard seed like myself calling you on your shit. This man is so powerful, subhanAllah. His story is incredible. And this story is really not about black, subhanAllah. His story is incredible. And this story is really not about black American man, African American man. Uh, now you hear African American man calling black women names and saying we're gonna go to different countries uh they have this tag that's called um the passport men we have passports and they flash their passports just like somali men flash their passports and 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 leave their families behind no matter what they don't care what happens to their children they just abandon their families like it's nothing and they go back back home or wherever and start new families. The story is the same, regardless of where these men are from. It's the curse of the black men. Let's be honest. And when we have, when we talk about these things and we, when we call a spade, spade, it doesn't mean we hate our own, but it will never change unless we have these conversations. It doesn't matter what, we, what their faith religion is. It doesn't matter where they come from. This is something that is so easy for black men to do. And you know, the funny thing is now these men think that they can go overseas and marry from other cultures. They don't even marry. They just leave sons. Sometimes they marry them and then they leave and never come back. Vacation marriages. It's happening right now. I know men in, from our community who are very well to do, highly educated brothers who have been married, had children, yet they go back home or they fish young, beautiful girls uh, 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 from social media and then who, who live uh, uh, at home, back home. And then they made, make them fall in love with them. Yeah, you've heard that term, uh, the lover boy, you know, like what Andrew Tate, that's why they all love Andrew Tate, you know, <laughs> because he, he reminds them it's okay to destroy women and to leave bastard children all over the place. It doesn't matter whether I, the man marries the woman or not, even in Nikah, when you don't marry a woman for goodness and for a long term, knowing that you will leave her after a few months and she's just a vacation wife because some woman, if she's Muslim, will not allow a man who takes very good care of him. So even non-Muslims will even say, oh, I will confer for you. I will confer when they go to other countries. What matters is what's in the heart and the intentions of these people and their intentions are just good times. It doesn't matter in this case. So this young woman came and this Pim finds her and, and, and it leads or, or makes her fall in love with him, offers her drugs, what have you, whatever. The, it doesn't matter how it happens. It's the thing black men do. The story of how it starts might be a little different here and there. But in the end, it leads to trail of sorrow and tears. What is wrong with our men? How are we supposed to be respected in the world? When you hear the story of this brother, his mother hated him. She hated him so much. Oh, somebody said black men are not the, as, the same as Somali men. Oh, Somali men are even actually worse in many ways. Give me a break. These are men who were raised in Islam. These are men who actually had fathers often who raised them. 
Yet, we are famous in the West. Somali women are always the only women that are alone at schools, in hospitals, in the stores, in the malls, at the park. So give me a break. You, should, you were supposed to know better. At least African-American men are broken. And they went through so much. After a few months, walking away and never coming back, never sending anything, leaving their black. In, in this case, it's more than 80%, I would say, of Somali men leave their children behind. If, if it wasn't social services and the generosity of these countries, we would all be crack babies and, 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 and you would have entire families thank God to government housing and section aid vouchers and all this stuff. The generosity of these countries. But this is, it doesn't matter how it happens. It's the thing that is easy for black men to do. This boy, his mother, who is Arab, hated him because you know, the, all she could see is his father's face and how he destroyed her life. She called him the N-word. She tried to drown him, kill him many times. She hated him, always reminding him who he is and his blackness. And his, the fact that he's just... He's untouchable. There's a time when, and the whole community, he said, even relatives treated him the same. There were times when he said he fell in front of people and, 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 and he got his knees. He fell into glass and his knees were caught bleeding. No one came to his aid because nobody wanted to touch him because he's black. Because he's black. Malis. There's this man who think, I am sick and tired of black woman and her attitude and black American woman, by the way, tough cookies. They are just like Somalis, of the world. People don't play that game. It won't be long before innocent men who are just vacation around, hating on their black sisters, mistreating their black sisters. The difference is at least the Somali has the good sense of knowing there's nothing better than Somali woman. He will leave a Somali woman for another Somali woman because he knows no other woman would put up with his crap. <laughs> yeah? So he knows that much. He knows this much. He'll stick with the Somali. Two girls to impregnate. Hello. Can you, can you speak English? Because this, this, this conversation will be conducted in English. And it's not because of our skin. It's because of the behavior of our men. Thank you. Thank you. Be on, on here with you. Thank, uh, thank greetings. You. Greetings. Um, what I was going to say was the... Orta, I, I've, I've seen that man's uh, videos and it literally broke me last night. Mm. It broke me because I'm thinking to myself, how can anyone get over such trauma? Okay. How? how his mom was a student from egypt from what he said her his dad pimped her and turned her into this monster thus you know the results are him and his siblings and what what they went through and people can buy his book and or go look at his page mm. but just to bring back the story onto what is wrong with black man and and somali man in general mm -hmm. i think there's something distorted genetically mm -hmm. something has got to be off right because the way I look at it is, especially the man in this generation, like not our fathers. Mm -hmm. I think our fathers did the best that they could because they had discipline. Yes. They, had, they were grounded. Um, they provided for us. They taught us. They, 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 they respected us. Um, even our brothers are still on, on, their, on their heels. I have a feeling that ever since the Civil War and anything after that, the men are broken. You know, there's a saying in the African-American community, the crib, you know, the crib, well, you know, that's where the kids sleep, but they haven't caught the umbilical cord. He mm -hmm. still wants to be a baby, uh, 
you know, a boy's like a mother, you know, he wants to be mothered, but he doesn't know how to be father. He doesn't know how to take on that responsibility. These men are not holding each other responsible. There's no accountability. When a man leaves behind his children, his kinfolks, they're not going after him and holding him responsible, saying, how dare you not look after them? How dare you not do this? How dare you not do that? So they're going and there's, there's no consequences for their actions at all because they have a whole society I, that's, yes, mama, that, that's backing them up. Mm-hmm. They have the a whole entire society. community, exactly. I'm yes, surprised. they yeah. have women that are ready to marry them that do not hold them accountable for their past crimes. They have children that they do not call, that, do not, that, do not, that they do not support. And when he walks into a cafe, he's the lion. He's mm-hmm. the professor. He's Jale. I mean, it's ridiculous the amount of roses that they get that they do not, that they do not deserve yeah. because a respect should be given where it's due. And it's not due to the Somali man, especially in the West. I cannot speak for back home because I haven't been back home. Um, so it's all the same. Have, have the been. men here are just honest to God. I look at them and not all of them. But most of them are so lost in reality. I was watching one guy tonight, and I don't want to be too long here. And he had the audacity to say that Khadija radiallahu anhu, she inherited most of her, of her wealth, trying to marifte, degrade her her like entrepreneurship to mm-hmm. say that she didn't earn it because she was a woman. It's because she inherited. It. Mm-hmm. So. So he was trying to discourage Somali sisters to go and educate themselves and have business by bringing up the most honorable woman on earth. Mm. I'm so baffled as to where this is going. I don't know. I don't know if there's any hope. Maybe there is some hope down the line. But right now, as we speak, we have men that have left their jobs. Yeah. Mm. That turn their wealth into family members, names. So yes. that they don't just pay to child, support. child support. Yeah. Yeah. So they can avoid paying child support. We mm-hmm. have men that are going back home, as you've seen the documentary on Channel Four, that are impregnating these women, having vacation marriages, leaving these kids behind, and having absolutely nothing to offer anyone at all. When it comes March and the tax return is returned, these men flock to Nairobi. Indeed. Indeed. Very and it's sad. a Somali woman that allows it. Yes, yes, yes. We are, we, we are, we are to blame. We really are to blame as well. Um, but, but I mean, they were supposed to be the, 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 the leaders. They were supposed to lead us. So we, we, we don't, really don't have them. Yeah. I, and it, to me, I feel like, why have not Somali women just protested and said, I will not procreate with you? I there's no point. I agree with creating with an idiot that will leave you behind with five, seven kids for you to fend for yourself. And when he gets back, he has nothing to offer you. Indeed. Nothing. Indeed. Nothing but diseases, actually. And then, oh, I'm sorry. my goodness. Yes. yes. Passports and running around the different parts of the yes, world. Yes. And, and that's why the, the passport is what they dangle back home and mm. go and check. Hey. You know, I'm very new also in this part of the world. And, and you know. But but for also women in the Qurbaha, women in the diaspora, there's also some education that is needed, man, to like in this case, it doesn't matter whether you are married, it doesn't because some women the, the, the fear they have is maybe in their register, I hear some of them lie. And you know I'm very new also in this part of the world. So here you can educate me on it. Some women like and, and this men lie, like you know, I'm a single mother, like single in the in the word single itself. Like we never verify things. anything. We we refuse yeah. to verify information. And, and then, and, and then yeah. when this guy walks out, it's like she feels she can't again come and claim. No, no. It doesn't matter whether you never even married. The fact that he's a father and walking on this earth, he has to be responsible for those children. Absolutely. And and he has mean, to be. So our women also need that education that you can take this guy and, and hold him responsible. Yes, he can, he can claim he's not working. I have seen young men who have refused to work and just sit there. Why? And, 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 and the funniest bit was we had a function and this guy comes with a beautiful suit and the next morning he returns it. Can you imagine, play, puts on a suit, ha, attends a function, and the next morning he's retiring because they can't even afford to buy that. Oh, but he had to come in a beautiful, pathetic, lying all across. Everything is a lie. 
just because he doesn't want to pay um, higher child support. Towards, yeah. Well, child support. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the women need education. Um, this man needs to be held accountable. And definitely, the other thing that needs is, as women, we need to know our worth. These Indeed. men who are hurting other women, we need to put them, you know, held accountable. Like, I'm not talking to you, but abandoned another woman and other children have this issue. What can you even tell me? Yeah, thank you. Walk slam it. One slam for I hope you guys are all well. Um, I, just wanna, I just want to say, and he got stuck in the Dominican I think it was uh, last year. Mm. I've, you know, I had, I, I was, there was a, relative of mine that was talking about you and I searched up your video and I have to say well like Allahumma barak you are one of the most funniest most elegant eloquently spoken women uh, you oh, know okay. older women Allahumma barak who thank I've seen you, thank you. who talk about contemporary issues in such a manner that attracts attention of masses you know like mm-hmm. people have to whether they like it or not they have to listen to you because you have a way of getting your message across a lot more about it, right? So that's what I wanted to say, first and foremost. Thank you. Second of all, um, I, I I was just listening to some Hallaha. You was talking about the passport bros and, and whatnot. I literally just watched a video not that long ago about this guy <laughs> who went to the Dominican Republic, this one of the passport bros, and he got stuck in the Dominican Republic, <laughs> right? <laughs> and he was begging people to send him a hundred dollars. <laughs> oh my God! What happened yeah. to him? How did he get stuck? So like he, he had- missed. He missed his flight. He missed mm-hmm. it, the flight that he was supposed to get on to get back to America. <laughs> and uh, they basically said he was like, "Guys, I need a hundred dollars, you know, to book another flight." And it and it literally the, the comments were just like, you know, making mockery out this person. And these are the kind of, you know people that tend to be the, the so-called passport bros, you know, no mm. self-respect. Imagine as a man coming on social media, begging for money, asking people to cash up. And Allah, so pathetic. Imagine, and he was an older man. He was, a, I think I'd probably say he was in his 40s and whatnot. But, mm. so this is like, these are the kind of people generally that tend to, <clears throat> you know, walk, walk around waving their little passport around because they have nothing else to offer. Mm-hmm. And the little money in their pocket, right? And it's similar to not all, a lot of Somali guys, it's quite similar because I've heard similar sentiments. Oh, yeah. Somali guys, um, now it's, it's quite sad and quite concerning because you're hearing the same things from younger men as well. It mm-hmm. was older men before you say, oh, naga no walan. you know, um, uh, these crazy women, you know, they're, they're doing this and that. I'm just going to go back home and get married to yeah, a they're young... Blaming us uh, for becoming Americanized. They would say they're too yeah. Americanized and too feminist. Absolutely, but in exactly, absolutely. But in other words, it's just they're blaming us for their shortcomings and their incompetence, right? Mm. They know that they cannot compete with other males in their own age group, right? In their mm. peer group, they know yes. that they are far behind when it comes to their peer group. Their peer groups, mo- most often than not, are educated. They have somewhat of a career. They ha- they are earning a certain amount, and so on and so forth. Whereas him, he doesn't have a career, unfortunately. He has a job, and he goes from one job. To another goes from and he doesn't think about upskilling he doesn't think about mahalha, you know working on his skills to perhaps maybe get into a cert- mm-hmm. certain tax bracket he doesn't care and a lot of the times right a lot of these males not all i just want to say not all before they come because <laughs> I, I know like the men on here are quite sensitive on this yeah. <laughs> they, they cry they cry <laughs> <laughs> they will come not up all men are equal not all men are the same <laughs> <laughs> They would literally come on my comment and on my videos and comment and be like, I saw you on that live. What was you saying? It's like, relax, Falala. I wasn't talking about you. Why are you so happy? Why is so- it even bothering you? If you're not one of those, the you know, people, then it shouldn't even bother you. But I have a thing about anyone who gets angry about the reality we are discussing here. If it bothers you, check yourself because you have an issue and fix it. Absolutely. I think it's just a guilty conscience though, isn't mm-hmm. it? You know, the, the conscience is saying, okay, maybe I'm okay. You know, but, but um, I want to finish off by saying, um, yeah. I think um, as women, um, I think too often we talk about men and what men need to do and, you know, how can we overcome certain issues, you know, and, and you know, that pertains to us as a community that mm-hmm. men have caused and so on and so forth. I think as women, we also need to hold ourselves accountable as well, you know. <clears throat> Mm. you know we also have our own shortcomings right 
And one of the things that I truly dislike, you know, uh, I'm not saying all Somali women are like this, but one one of the things that I truly dislike when it comes to Dur Somali, Karkor, some of them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they, they they pander a lot to men, right? They have mm -hmm. no self respect. They have very they have, they have no sense of self worth, no sense of self value, right? They like have, like you could talk about Somali guys, right? And it's not all. You could just be like, oh, look Somali, you know, uh, a lot of them. Why do they leave Ilmu after their kids? Why do they divorce their children after when they divorce their, you know? And then there was always that one woman. We just should not answer. We should you know, and it's like, well, I we're not talking about all oh, men. Like, why are you so concerned? Like, you know, and it's like, as women, we need to find a way to, you know, address these type of women. You know, like we need to, before we check men, these are the type of women that we need to check first. Because there is nothing more I hate than talking about an issue that, that exists in our community. And there is a woman who discredits me and invalidates me, even though she could be a victim of that. Even though, <laughs> who knows? Right? Maybe the husband, her ex husband, left her with her children. Who knows, right? But yet she still sat here and she would never mahalaha, get off this uh, horse of Somali men being the picture of perfection. So these are the type of women that we do need to address. We need to hold each other accountable. And and there are, we do have our own shortcomings as well in many ways. But um, oh, I do want to say. Her. It's coming from her. Another one that I've heard. One of the one of the craziest things that I've heard was, "Oh, I will marry the worst of the worst of Somali men before I marry the best of Mahalla Ajanib." And I'm yep. like, "Oh my goodness!" So you are willing to <laughs> settle for the bottom of the barrel when Mahalla when you can have a chance of meeting a good guy who could treat you well and well. You know, Qabiyala, that that's that's tribalism speaking, you know, because tribalism is is, is like an onion.